So, uh, Agnieszka, would you like to tell us shortly about your, well, this is a euphemism, outstanding career? <laughs> You're very kind. So, uh, as you mentioned, I'm currently leading globally Google, Google for Startups, an organization uh, whose mission is to level the playing field for startups and their communities to succeed, no matter where they are. But uh, I've been at Google for quite some time. I started 12 years ago and for many years I served as country director of Google in Poland. And you know, Google in Poland felt like a startup itself because uh, when I started in 2008, it has just eight people and you know, I could participate and influence uh, the growth of this organization and all, also everything that we contributed to the market. So when I was leaving the team, we had 500 people. Uh, and now I'm bringing my experience from this market uh, also to the broader startup ecosystem. And I learn a lot how, how startups work uh, in the different parts of the world. So it's a very exciting journey. It sounds surely very exciting and you seem like a very, very persevering person. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And I want to know, like, how do you see the Central European startup landscape? How are we like, different compared to other places? Uh, definitely Central and Eastern Europe is the place to be and uh, it has a lot of potential. Uh, McKinsey called this region digital challengers because we have uh, such a huge pool of IT talent, because we are very entrepreneurial and I think the success and the transformation of these countries over the last 30 years proved that we know how to build free economy. So the potential is there. In terms of the startups, uh, we have a lot of, we are strong in certain spaces. So uh, I would say in the software development, in gaming, uh, and um, we still need maybe to be a little bit, bit more brave and risk taking. But I would say that generally this, this region is being noticed. And a good proof of that is the investment that came uh, to, from VCs that came to the region in 2019. Uh, 1.8 billion dollars, uh, which of course is exponential growth versus the previous years. However, it is still relatively small market versus the uh, big European economies. But as I said, big, big potential digital challenger. Awesome. So, uh, what do you like the effects of the ongoing crisis on startups? Do you mind telling us what were they were exactly? Yes, absolutely. Uh, first of all, let me say that this is really these are really unprecedented times. Uh, we've never experienced a crisis like this before. Absolutely. No, mm, it is it is a hu human crisis, and we don't know yet what will be the long term effects of of it. Definitely, this is also the first crisis that happened in the digital world, mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time as it creates lots of challenges for people, it also creates new opportunities and. I would like maybe to even give a few examples of startups that really pivoted in uh, during this time or, Please you do. know, did, or just, um, you know, um, did, did everything to support their team. So one of the startups that just come, comes to my mind is Informatica. This is a startup my team is working with very closely here in at Campus Warsaw. And uh, during the COVID time, when it started, the lockdown started, um, they, they simply developed uh, an app that, that help you, you know, mitigate the risk of COVID and they helped 300 organizations just within three weeks, they were able to develop the app so that half a million people could actually patients could benefit from it. Uh, we see also uh, emerging startups in other in other sectors. I think e-learning is a good example. Mm -hmm. And uh, another startup that comes to my mind, um, this is Explain Everything. Uh, this is another startup from Poland that is currently, uh, you know, developing a product like a whiteboard that is replacing this traditional school uh, chalkboards that we know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they enable teachers to provide, uh, you know, to provide completely different experience whether sharing with students at uh, these whiteboards or just recording or, um, or uh, you know, it, it's happening from kindergarten to, uh, to uh, MIT and start for university. So this wouldn't be possible if not these new trends and changing consumer behaviors. But it's worth noticing those examples. And last but not least, uh, we will be having also a Hungarian startups in one of the coming acceleration programs. Mm -hmm. 
and um, and I'm very very happy to welcome King. I think she's also uh, she's also a guest at Brain Bar. So she's uh, developing a platform that is e e ebook platform that is enabling uh, enabling you uh, publish your book at any store that you want. Wow, that's really impressive to know that we have so much talent in this region. Wow, that's truly something. But I want to know like how how many I wouldn't say how many, but are this are the like is there a really good percentage of females who are participating in the startup scene in the region? Oh, thank you for this question. So uh, one of our uh, one of our key uh, missions here is to really help with the representation. So generally address, I would say, naturally underrepresented groups in the startup ecosystem. So female founders is one group, uh, but also there are other underrepresented groups. For example, black founders. So in terms of females, uh, when I look at our community, so community of startups within GFS, we see around 30% of female founders. But whenever we are, uh, you know, starting a new program, we either try to get 50-50 mm -hmm. uh, or we are just doing programs that are specifically focused on female founders. And I see a lot of talent and I also see uh, more and more female are taking CTO roles. One example that comes to my mind, this is, um, this is actually a UK example, but, uh, but I like it because uh, the person there, Georgina, she's a data analyst, data, data um, specialist, mm -hmm. and she's collaborating with another wonderful female founder, Ryan, who is a doctor, and together, you know, combining their different skills, they are developing an app for uh, patients uh, in the can who have cancer and who really have difficulties and feel completely not being supported by the medical ec uh, ecosystem because it's so complex. So it just shows that female founders are there and they are wonderful and they are also uh, doing IT jobs, which is a uh, big hope. It's very, I mean, I, I get really happy when I hear things like this, that we're moving forward with having equal opportunities. And you mentioned that the, the whole pandemic situation was also an opportunity to for startups. So why do you think that this is like maybe the best time to create a startup? First of all, the consumer changing, the consumer behavior is changing uh, rapidly. Uh, looking at even Google search, we see that online shopping searches grew two times during COVID. It's well, uh, worldwide. Yes? So it's a great opportunity for all the e-commerce related uh, businesses. And honestly, I think uh, CE has no other chance but to take on this opportunity. We don't have such a legacy from the past. And I think that having such a big talent pool of, uh, you know, IT specialists, we should go for it. And we should be the digital first countries who really want to build uh, those, uh, those companies that will respond to the new consumer needs. And e-commerce is not only one. I mentioned also gaming. So entertainment is also a big sector. And now we entertain ourselves at home. So uh, huge, uh, huge potential. Well, actually, I have a friend. He's from Romania. His name is Mirta. Mirta, if you're seeing me, hi. So he is very, very talented and he's working on creating his own game. Tell me why Mircea shouldn't move to another country, let's say, I don't know, the United States and create his company there in I don't know, Silicon Valley. Why should he stay here in his region? First of all, I think that the startup ecosystem is really becoming global. And I think uh, this pandemic will only accelerate, accelerate this. And when I think about the mission of even my organization, we would like to bring all the connections, products, and you know possibilities and funding also to this region. So there is no really need to go to another market unless you really treat this market as an important market. You have consumers there and for any reason you want to open there either an office or a subsidiary. So I would say that the one thing that maybe we could still develop more in Central and Eastern Europe is, you know, knowledge sharing. We need to have a vibrant community and uh, we need to have more openness for sharing knowledge and not be afraid to talk about the business we are planning to, to do because uh, there are so many possibilities that like um, it's not that people will copy you people, people will actually let you know how not to make the mistakes that they have made and we see this uh, 
you know, coming from founders from our community, how much they appreciate the community, being part of the community they can learn from. And I think it's something within our culture as well, in the whole region. I think we should encourage people to actually learn from their fa failures and accept them as uh, a way to, to grow more. You know, not just, Absolutely. okay, I failed and I'm going to stop here, you know. Oh, we need failures. Like, we all make <laughs> wrong decisions, but not necessarily they are leading to something bad in our lives. I would say they are showing us different paths. So when I think even about my career, you know, I was I was going outside of comfort zone, for example, working in the different industries, but I really wanted to learn the different perspectives. And after some time, I understood it was so beneficial because I knew more of what I want to do. And I also knew what I don't want to do. And I could also see how I can apply knowledge, you know, from one industry to another whenever it was relevant. So I generally would encourage people to test, to be brave, to go out of comfort zone and yeah, and share and share with others. Be part of the community, as I said before. All right. So we have a comment from an audience member, uh, Esther, is saying, "Who um, who are your business heroes or mentors? The ones from from whom you've learned the most." I'm learning a lot from these entrepreneurs uh, in our community. Every day I meet someone that is telling a story that is totally, you know, like uh, taking my heart. And uh, one of the story uh, I'm happy to share is uh, from, uh, from Sano Genetics. There is a co-founder there, female co-founder, uh, Charlotte. Uh, who told me her story uh, when she was, you know, when she really wanted to do something in genetics because something happened in the in her family in the past that intrigued her to really be in this space. And, you know, she was a banker to really fund her studies. And later on, uh, he, she met her husband at Cambridge and they set up a business. And she is in this genetic space. And she's really trying to solve for something she's, passionate about, she believes in, and also that she believes is so important to solve because of the future medicine will be very personalized and she wants to meet this dream. So I'm learning a lot from these people and, you know, anyone can be a mentor. It does not need to be a person that is older than you. It can be just someone uh, with a passion and someone who who is going outside of a comfort zone, as I said. Exactly. It doesn't matter the source of the learning as long as you're learning. That's that's really important. So you mentioned that we should be encouraging entrepreneurs more. So what are the programs available in Hungary that you might know of that fresh entrepreneurs or people who happen to have an idea that they want to implement can turn to? Thank you for this question. We are really committed to, to Hungary and we are actually uh, having a program that will be launched very soon. Uh, this is a program for those entrepreneurs who want to start their business. This is a new generation of founders program. And we will have an exclusive workshop for the Brain Bar community. So on the 24th of September, please feel invited. And if you are interested, please learn more later uh, on the internet or maybe from the organizers because... Uh, also we our website, brainbar.com. Very easy, brainbar.com. That's where <laughs> you can find all the information that you need. Uh -huh. Absolutely. So the, these particular workshops are aimed at helping people, you know, grow their creativity and innovation. And you will be able to work with people who are coming from different... Uh, different fields uh, of the you know industry maybe have different expertise and different perspectives and mm, what we have learned running these programs in other parts of the world is that people have this aha moments how a diversity in a team actually brings results so stay tuned for for the details and please uh, please come to this but uh, of course this is not the only program we will be also soon launching second edition of the startup academy mm -hmm. uh, for entrepreneurs uh, in hungary this is more for startups that already have an mvp so have a product and these workshops online workshops will be uh, focused at uh, helping startup with design, with product, marketing, but also grow, for, especially for those who would like to enter other markets. I think it can be a useful 
uh, useful workshop. It's great that you're helping people grow and pushing them beyond their potential and beyond their limits. That's really awesome. So this is the last comment before I wrap up with you. So Ben says asking, when it comes to the investment potential, what do you think makes the CE region more attractive than the West? Yeah, I already mentioned this high IT talent base. We have more uh, IT, uh, you know, IT specialists in many countries in Europe and even in the world. So this is definitely our strength. Our overall uh, high, um, you know, high quality of education and entrepreneurship. So that's this. But I also think that our mindset that is really changing right now and uh, this transformation of the over the last uh, decades show that we really want want a better world tomorrow and this is a very important mindset to have these days because in some other parts of the world people are more afraid like that tomorrow will be worse than than, than than today but i think we are still very ambitious people and this is what attracts uh, investors mm, so we should encourage entrepreneurs to be more curious and to keep that curious curiosity and go out of the box and yes, help and each other. Think, yeah, help each other, big communities. And, you know, think big because our markets are relatively small. So thinking about like broader target group, you know, entering other markets in digital world is relatively easy. So I would encourage that as well. Great. Well, thank you so much for being with us here today, Anyashka. I definitely had a lot of fun with you, definitely learned a lot from you. And I hope that our future entrepreneurs in the audience have learned a lot. Thank you so much for being with us.